Atlas. Now, last week, we told you that 3i Atlas was getting way brighter, way bluer as it got close to the sun. Well, now there is a new report from NASA. We're talking about Atlas again. And this time, it's not a recap. It's real updates with fresh images, fresh instrument data, and a few surprises that change how we read the last month of observations. If you're new here, 3i Atlas is the third confirmed interstellar visitor ever found, discovered in July 2025, and it just cleared the most intense phase of its solar pass, perihelion, its closest approach to the sun. The catch is that during that critical window, it was hidden in the glare for Earth-based observers, so the best angles were from space coronagraphs and for a brief stretch from Mars's vantage. Now it's re-emerged and we finally have a clean look again, plus some measurements that help explain the weirdness and keep a few mysteries alive. Let's set the scene quickly. In late October, 3i Atlas skimmed by the sun at roughly Earth, sun distance, a little farther out, and everyone with a coronagraph or long baseline scope was watching the light curve and color indices like a hawk. The key questions were straightforward. Did it survive intact? How active did it get? And was the motion purely gravitational or did we see a small, persistent extra push, like we've seen before in rare comets and notably in Aumuamua? First, survival and appearance. Once Atlas slipped out from behind the glare, early stacks showed a compact, star-like core with a tight, faint halo, consistent with a small coma, without a dramatic, down-sun dust tail in those first frames. Later stacks under better geometry started to reveal structure, a broader hazy envelope, hints of fine jets, and in some processing, a subtle sunward enhancement that observers flagged as an anti-tail geometry artifact rather than a true tail pointing at the sun. That distinction matters. Under certain alignments, dust lying in the orbital plane can project as a sunward spike, it looks paradoxical, but it's a known effect. The big picture, Atlas is active, but that classic sweeping, kilometer-wide dust streamer so many expected wasn't the headline in those first reappearance images. Second, brightness. The pre-perihelion surge was real and steep. Typical comets brighten with heliocentric distance roughly to a power of minus two to minus four when activity ramps. Atlas's apparent slope briefly pushed far steeper in late October. That doesn't mean the object broke physics. It means the active area, grain size distribution, and volatile mix turned on quickly. A sharp brightening can happen if a thermally lagged volatile, like CO2 or CO ice, suddenly vents across newly illuminated patches, producing lots of gas with relatively little large grain dust. Gas is poor at scattering visible light compared to dust, so you can have strong activity signatures without a photogenic dust tail. It's counterintuitive, but consistent. Third, color and chemistry. Multiple observers reported the object trending bluer than many dusty comets in visible bands, with green-blue enhancements consistent with diatomic carbon, C2, and possibly Co plus emissions under strong solar UV. Blue-leaning signatures don't require high temperature. They can arise from specific ions and radicals fluorescing in the coma. That aligns with early reports of strong CO2 relative to H2O in Atlas's environment when it was much farther out. An interstellar object can carry a different volatile budget. And if CO2 dominates early activity, you'll see behavior that doesn't look like a dirty snowball dominated by water. Now to the part that grabbed headlines. Motion. When the dust settled on perihelion tracking, ephemeris teams compared predicted gravity-only paths to measured positions and found a small, persistent residual, an in-plane non-gravitational component that nudged the object slightly away from a purely Keplerian track. If you followed comet dynamics, you've seen this story before. Sustained outgassing acts like micro-thrusters. The direction and magnitude matter. A radial away from the sun component plus a smaller transverse component are exactly what you'd expect if a handful of active vents keep pushing in a preferred orientation as the nucleus rotates. It's tiny. Think tens of thousands of kilometers cumulative deviation over weeks across hundreds of millions of kilometers of travel. But in precision navigation, that's a real signal. And crucially, you don't need exotic physics to get it. An isotropic gas flow at a few hundred meters per second maintained for days, can do the job. So if gas rockets are firing, where's the giant dust cloud? Two points. First, gas dominates the reaction force, 
dust dominates the look. If Atlas is shedding mostly gas and only fine, fast-migrating grains, the colma stays compact and the dust tail stays muted, especially near high phase angles and poor contrast. Second, the gas species matter. CO2 and CO-driven activity can be vigorous with relatively less large, slow dust that makes photogenic tails. That's a known pattern in some comets with unusual volatile budgets. Add geometry, exposure, sky brightness and filtering, and you can absolutely have strong dynamics with modest visuals. Fresh imaging after reappearance has begun to map real structure. Stacked sequences in green filters optimized for C2 picked up a broad, soft halo extending hundreds of thousands of kilometers, with multiple fine jets fanning from the core. Some features align with expected sindens and synchrones, the dust and gas streamlines shaped by solar pressure and release time, while others hint at rotation-modulated vents. Under bright moon or twilight, you need lots of short exposures and careful background subtraction, but the jet pattern is there. Those jets are the simplest explanation for the small non-grav signal, asymmetric outgassing that doesn't perfectly average to zero over a spin. Radio observers added an important chemical piece, tentative, then confirmed detections of OH, the daughter product of water, via 1665-1667 MHz absorption maser features when geometry allowed. That's a big deal because earlier upper limits on H2 O nearer 3 AU look surprisingly low while CO2 looks strong. The new detection suggests water has finally turned on post-perihelion as the thermal wave penetrates deeper layers, which is exactly what models predict. CO2 lead the show at larger distances. Water joins as the sun's heat sinks in. So the too dry narrative looks more like staggered chemistry than no water. Put all of this together, and a consistent picture emerges. 3i Atlas is active, volatile rich with an interstellar tilt in composition, showing steeper than usual brightening when CO2 CO vents dominated, then transitioning into a more classic mixed volatile coma with detectable OH after perihelion. The coma remains compact in early reappearance imaging. The dust tail is subtle under current geometry, and fine jetting explains a real but small non-gravitational term. None of that requires exotic propulsion. All of it fits an interstellar nucleus with different layering, porosity, and volatile abundance than typical long-period comets we see from our own Uit cloud. There are still open questions that make Atlas special. Why was the preperihelion color behavior so variable, greenish in some runs, then notably blue? Emission bands can dominate differently as the active mix changes, but the timing is worth modeling against rotation and solar UV flux. How thick is the cosmic ray process crust? And did perihelion crack new vents that will evolve over weeks? Infrared spectra suggest significant processing, likely a tough outer layer that delays water release until late, which neatly explains the chemistry timeline. And what about the line of sight anomalies that looked like sunward jets? Expect more of those illusions whenever Earth, comet, Sun geometry lines up to project dust in the orbital plane. As the phase angle evolves, those features usually morph into a more familiar down-sun fan. Practically, what happens next? From now through mid-December, the viewing geometry improves. As phase angle drops and Earth, comet distance shrinks, the coma, tail contrast should rise. That means better constraints on dust production rates, better spin state fits from jet corkscrews, and stronger detections of water and carbon-bearing species from both ground and space. If you're observing, narrowband filters tuned to C2 and CN will earn their keep, and deep broadband stacks under dark sky will finally stretch the dust to the noise floor. For the big guns, coordinated HSD WSD ground campaigns around the December 19th safe approach will let teams cross-calibrate gas and dust production, grain size distributions, and outflow speeds. If the non-grav components stay coherent, orbit solvers will update the A1A2 terms and lock in how much thrust the vents are delivering. A quick word on expectations. You'll keep hearing the phrase, it's not acting like a normal comet. That's fair in the sense that its volatile order of operations, brightness slope, and early compact appearance differ from the averages. But average comets are mostly from our backyard. Interstellar nuclei won't all look like our Uit cloud. 
Different birth environments, different cosmic ray histories, different thermal properties, different show. Atlas is teaching us that Comet is a category with a much wider parameter space than the few dozen textbook examples we replay in our heads. If you've made it this far and you care about evidence over hype, you're my kind of viewer. I'll keep pulling the newest image stacks, spectra, and orbit solutions into plain language so you can track what's real, what's model-dependent, and what's still unknown. If that's useful, please tap like so this update reaches more people. Drop your take in the comments. What's the single strangest behavior you want to explain next? And subscribe with notifications so you don't miss the December window when data density spikes and we finally see whether the dust tail blooms as geometry improves. Whatever Atlas turns out to be in detail, it's already doing the most valuable thing a visitor can do, forcing us to sharpen our tools and widen our imagination without letting go of the data.